to Moo Moo Math. Today we're going to do part four of six parts. We're going through the seventh grade curriculum and it's all the content for the final exam or for the course. Okay, so today we're going to talk about probability. So we're going to first start by finding the mean. So what does it mean to find the mean? The mean is the average so what we want to do is we want to add up all of our data and find the average. So let's grab a calculator. Okay, so we have 8 plus 18 plus 21 plus 8 plus another 21 plus a third 21 plus 12 plus 10 plus 11 plus 14, plus 9, plus 12, plus 8, plus 12. And that gives us a total of 185. Now, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different countries. So, if we take the sum, which is the total of 185, and we want to then divide that sum by how many countries we have, which is 14, to find the average metal count. So dividing by 14, we can see that it's 13.2 is the average. So 13.2 metals is the average number of metals between those 14 countries. So that's how you find the average or the mean. Now let's look for the mode. Okay, so what does mode mean? Mode means, and I always remember this because it has an O in it, it occurs the most. So which, which number occurs the most in our data set? Well, let's make a little chart. We have an 8. We have an 18. We have a 21. We have a second 8. Hmm, I'm going to list it up here with 8s and kind of group these together. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we have a 21. That's my second 21. And then I have another 21. That's my third 21. And then I have a 12. That's a new number, so I'm just going to tack it on the bottom. I have a 10 and an 11. Those are both new numbers. Okay, so 10 and 11. Then I've got a 14. I haven't listed that yet, so 14. And then I have a 9. I haven't listed that one yet. I have another 12, hmm. so there's 12, and then I have an 8, and then I have a third 12. Okay, <clears throat> so what mode means is which one of these data sets occurs the most? Well, I have three 8s, I have three 21s, and I have three 12s. So this one actually has three modes because we have three numbers that occur more than the others, and they all occur three times. So the modes are 8, 12 and 21. So that's how you find the mode. Okay, now we're going to take that same data set and we're going to find a median. Hang on just one second. Get this over here for us. Okay, so the same data set we want to find the median. Well, to find the median, we want to put the numbers in order from smallest to greatest. So I'm actually going to take the list that I made and I'm going to use it to help me. Okay, so I've got my mode list and I'm going to start listing them from smallest to largest. So I had three eights, eight, eight, and eight. So that covers these three. I'll let you kind of see where I'm working here. Then I have a nine. There is a nine and then there's a ten that one out then there's an 11 then 12 I have three 12 so I have to list 12 12 12 I list all three of them and then there's not a 13 but I do have a 14 no 15 no 16 no 17 but I have an 18 
and then there's no 1920 the next ones are my 321s so there we go I've got them in order now okay so that's the first thing you need to do is get them listed from smallest to largest and if they're repeaters you need to repeat them okay so now we should have 14 numbers and it's always good to double check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I do have 14. So since this is an even number, I'm not going to have a number right in the middle. I'm just going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 above and 7 below. So these two numbers, I'm going to average those together to find the median. Since there's not a center number. When there's an odd number, there's one in the center, but there's 14, so it's an even number. So when we average 12 and 12, we just get 12. So that's my median. Now, now that I have these in order, I'm going to take this list from smallest to largest and find my quartile 1. Well, what we've just done is we found the middle 50%. So up here we have the top 50% and down here we have the lower 50%. So we're going to take the lower 50% and find half of that. Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers. That's an odd number. So we're going to have 1 in the middle, and the 1 in the middle is 9. We have 3 below it and 3 above it. So notice that's our midpoint, so that's why this is in the middle. So that becomes our Q1, which represents a quartile, meaning 25%. So we have 25% of the data below, 25% of the data above, and then we're going to find Q3, which is the middle of the top half. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so again we have 7, the middle number is 18. That ends up being my Q3, which is the top quartile. This should be Q3, so that's 18, and that's how you find your quartiles. So you've got quartile 1, which represents the bottom 25%, the second quartile, which is the from 25 to 50%, from 50 to 75%, and from 75% to 100%. So that's what's in quarters or quartiles. Now, once we do that, we have to be able to create box and whisker plots. So what we're going to do is we're going to find what we call a five number summary with a data set. And from that five number summary, we're gonna create a box and whisker. So what is the five number summary? Number summary. Okay, we need five numbers. The first one is the lowest, the smallest. The next one is our Q1. The next one is our median. The next one is our Q3, and the last one is our highest, and that is the five number summary. So from our data set, we need to find these five numbers. Well, low and high is easy. These are already listed in order from lowest to highest. So lowest is five, and the highest is 21. Now, the next one you need to find is your median. So. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We have 17 numbers. That's an odd. That means we're going to have one in the middle. We're going to have 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The ninth one, 13, that is our median. Okay? Now, once we get that, we're going to look at the bottom part, not including the median this time because we have an actual median. Okay, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so halfway is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 4 below, 4 above. When you don't have 1 in the middle, you average. So our Q1 is going to be the average of 8 and 9. Well, the average of 8 and 9 is 8.5. So that's our Q1. We're then going to look at the top half and find, we're not going to include 13, we're just going to look at these eight digits, 1, 2, 3, 4, halfway between that, 1, 2, 3, 4, so 4 below, 4 above, we're going to average those two. 
Well, the average of 17 and 18 is 17.5. And that's our five number summary. So let's summarize that. The lowest is five, Q1 is 8.5, the median is 13, Q3 is 17.5, and the highest is 21. Now, how do I make a box and whisker out of that? Now that I have my five number summary, you're gonna start off with a scale, okay? And this is just a rough scale. And I'm gonna go from one to 25. So let's count in five, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'm counting by fives. So actually let's start that at zero. So five, 10, 15, 20, and 25. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Making a nice scale. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and I'm going to find my median first. Okay, my median is 13. So that's this point right here. My Q1 is 8.5. So here's 8.5 is right between those two. Then I'm going to go to my Q3, which is 17.5 right here. I'm going to find my low, which is 5, and my high, which is 21. Now, I've just plotted those on a nice evenly scaled number line. I'm going to make a box between Q1 and Q3 with a median marked in the center. So there's my box. And then from there, I'm going to draw a whisker from Q1 down to the minimum and from Q3 up to the maximum. And that is a box and whisker. And what that represents is each, se each section is 25% of the data. 25, 25, 25, and 25%. So that's how you draw a box and whisker using your five number summary. Yep. Okay. Uh, we're on problem seven. A survey shows or found 75% of students do their homework before 10 p.m. Predict how many students out of 600 do not do their homework before 9 p.m. Okay, so do not, that means it's the opposite group. So it's not the 75%. What percent would do their homework after 10 p.m.? Well, you take 100 and you subtract 75%. And that gives you 25%. So 25% of the students do homework after 10 p.m. So how many would that be out of 600? So you're going to use the is over of equals percent over 100 method. Okay, so out of 600, that's your of, so it's on the bottom. We don't know how many students do that, so that's your is. Percent is 25% out of 100. So there's your setup. So now let's cross multiply. X times 100 is 100X. And then 600, whoops, let's get this on. 600 times 25 is <coughs> 15,000. And then we divide that by 100, and you get x is 150. So there are 150 students that do homework after 10 p.m. And that's how you find that, that, the answer to the problem, okay? So that's number seven. Let's look at number eight. Okay, number eight. 14 out of 20 teens say they eat breakfast every morning. What is a reasonable prediction for the number of teens out of 1,280 who eat breakfast every morning? Okay, this is just a proportion. Again, we're doing the is out of, over of. So the part is 14 students out of the whole that was asked were there were 20 students asked, so 14 out of 20, so part over whole, is equal to, we don't know how many students eat breakfast, because remember, we've got the ones that eat on top, 
out of the ones we've asked or surveyed on the bottom, well, we don't know how many students eat breakfast out of 1,280. So again, you're doing part over whole. Now you've got proportions, so you can cross multiply. So I'm gonna get 20 times X, and then I'm gonna take 14 times 1,280, and that gives me, well, what's that, 17,920. And then to solve for X, I divide by 20. So let's divide that by 20. And that's going to give me 896 teens out of 1,280 who eat breakfast. And we'll add that, who eat breakfast. There you go. So, because on the word problems, you want to label your answers. Okay, and then the last one. Suppose 11 out of 17 students say they're attending the football game. How many students out of 475 would you expect to attend the football game? So again, you're doing a part, which is 11 out of those who are asked, 17. On top, you've got those who attend, and on the bottom, you have those who were asked. Okay, now how many students out of 475? Well, that's your total. So it's gonna go on the bottom, 475, and we're gonna predict using X, because that's your unknown, how many students would attend the game. Now we can cross multiply. So 17 times X is 17 X, and then 11 times 475, that's going to give me 5,225. And then we divide by 17 to solve. So divide by 17. So x is equal to 307.35. Now, this is an estimate of people. So we really don't want to leave that as a decimal because you can't have a decimal of a person. So you're gonna just round it off to 307 students who are gonna attend the game. And there we go. There's your, fi whoops, there's your final answer. 307 students who are gonna attend the game. Hope this video was helpful.